Uh, my name is Sid. Um, on the agenda today, a possible fundraise. Um, a disclaimer with uh, fund about fundraises. Um, it's not an exact science. And this is all speculation. We have a board meeting next week and we still need even like board commitment for this. So this is uh, a draft like many things in GitLab. Uh, second thing, please don't get distracted. Uh, most companies don't even talk about fundraising to the rest of the uh, people um, in the company. We do, but uh, your commitment is to not get distracted with it too much. Um, we do have a Slack channel for it. Uh, feel free to uh, post things there. And these things might not happen at all. Um, the proposal we're putting forward to the board is to raise a hundred million and a billion dollar valuation at the end of the first quarter and start the fundraising process February 25th. So kind of we have the first quarter numbers come in and raise on that. We should be at a 50 million uh, ARR at that point. There is significant interest from multiple VCs to do something similar to that number sooner. So that's very, very exciting. Um, like every day of the week now, I'm talking to a VC. Um, it's also because if you want to raise next year, it's good to give them kind of an early picture of the company so they can see a line. Nobody wants to invest in a dot. Uh, even though we have a great track record, they want to see it for themselves that we actually do what we uh, promise. What you can do to make the fundraise more successful, depending on your role, keep shipping, keep selling, keep putting out those marketing campaigns, keep answering questions, make sure our finances are in order. Just uh, run a great company. They, they will get it and uh, they will pay for that. Uh, the Meltano project, uh, maybe I should have included the link, although I don't know what the Google score is by now, but uh, I think the extractors are on a roll, like we're, we're getting more and more systems of GitLab, uh, getting the data out of it. Jacob Schatz started Melt, started Melt as an alternative to Looker. Uh, Looker right now is the only proprietary thing in our uh, stack. Um, we're not sure if it should be a part of GitLab or a really separate thing. Uh, we're just looking at the uh, options there. And there's a risk that we don't attract, oh, there's a cliffhanger, contributors. This is a project that started internally. Uh, so there's a big risk that if we don't open up the project enough, no one will contribute to it. And that's uh, what's the case right now. We have zero contributions. Uh, it's extremely worrying. Uh, so it's very important for the team uh, to not like talk amongst themselves, but to record everything, push things out, uh, put it into uh, documents. And that's not intuitive for the team. So um, that, is, that is a constant source of, of, of worry for me to make sure that we, we are an open source project and not just some hobby project in a company. Um, thanks. First remark and question, uh, the background. Yeah, awesome background. In Zoom, if you have a green screen, you can just put any image up there. I'm going to show off a bit um, because yesterday um, McBride said, hey, can't you just be on the moon if you're doing stuff like that? And two minutes later, I was like, yeah. And I think someone else said, Suddenly, Sid is coming out of the bushes. Not quite bushes, but this is a default uh, default background. So got a super cheesy one, uh, which doesn't look realistic at all. But this is uh, by far the favorite. And this is just something uh, if you Google for GitLab background image, it's uh, on the internet. On the internet. Clement asks, should we try to get Meltano presented in conferences? Yeah, so present at conferences for sure. I think Jacob Schatz gave the right example there. He, at the local view, view uh, meetup, he uh, presented um, his melt project to great enthusiasm. My moon is fluttering on the side. Yeah, I think, look, if you look at this, it's all fake, so. I think there's something that needs to happen here, but I'll do that later. Let's so fix it a bit by just doing that.
Andrew asks, can you use a video background? As far as I know, you can't do that. And Taylor says that he'll be talking at the Nashville's Analytics Summit. We'll be talking a lot about Meltano, so that's awesome to hear. Now, mind you, Taylor's in the data team, not the Meltano team. So Meltano team, uh, if you're watching, be inspired. Uh, we should be, uh, we probably should be participating. And it doesn't necessarily have to be at a conference, just putting stuff on YouTube. Like it's a half a minute, just um, do, doing half an hour session. I think one of the founders of Haptio, I think his name is Jim. There's a Beers with Jim every Friday where he opens up a beer and answers questions about Kubernetes from the community. He's one of the creators. Something like that uh, would be, uh, I think, awesome. And Jacob is already up to three conferences. Well done, Jacob. <laughs> Could you do slides as a background? I think you can screenshot them and then switch them uh, so that <laughs> to be possible <laughs> here, <laughs> you'd have the same problem as the weather people that they all like point in the general direction. Can't quite see themselves. Maltano asked me anything. I think that's a good idea. I think you should even prime the audience a bit with like, like by explaining what Maltano is at the beginning. I think otherwise you'll find you'll have few uh, questions. Gabriel, thanks for the background settings. If someone could put that in the tools section, that would be great. Uh, Dimitri, my co-founder became a fellow um, and every quarter he's gonna ship three things. Three things that make a big difference in the adoption of GitLab that really and go forward in our vision. And um, last quarter he did uh, uh, he helped with the cloud native installation. He got Jupyter integrated into uh, GitLab, which is an awesome thing. And uh, there's still some work ongoing there. Uh, using our own features, that was harder. Turns out that right now you can't really use auto DevOps with the Rails app. It doesn't know how to talk to a database. It doesn't do HTTPS. So we still got some work to do before we have kind of, I would say the minimum viable auto DevOps thing because like a, a Rails app is kind of the, the had a minimum pass thing. Heroku is based on that. We're, we're most of us, uh, most of the developers here are, are Rails developers. So got some work to do. Uh, for this quarter, Dimitri is focused on uh, the Android import and that shipped. Thanks Dao for reviewing that. It's gonna be in 11.2, which is, Amazing because of subgroups, you have the unique ability to import Android repos and uh, very excited that that's part of it. And the next thing is uh, Maven support, which would be a, a big thing. Um, I visited a lot of customers, mostly in the financial industry uh, a few weeks ago. Um, they all thought we were version control and CI, so we need to tell the story of complete DevOps. and. The old requested features we already had. Uh, so we need to point out that how our features map to their situation. I started something here. Uh, welcome any contributions to that. I'm excited that the forecast for Q3 is looking, uh, looking good. Uh, the commit is higher than planned, which is, uh, I'm not sure it ever happened before. It's a good sign. And uh, the best case, we go over 10 million in a quarter, which would be uh, pretty insane. Mind you, last year, the whole year, we did 10 million incremental ACV. So now we, we have a shot at doing that in a quarter. Uh, CMO search is at 60 days. Uh, we had some promising candidates, but nothing uh, uh, we, we didn't uh, get to offer with anybody. Uh, they, they didn't quite meet the bar. Um, we're having a lot of success with people that are not based in Silicon Valley because for them, it's very slim pickings if you wanna join an exciting startup. So uh, uh, GitLab is really, really interesting uh, to them. Cool, and this is, uh, this is what you make of it. So please ask questions, also feel free to speak up, even though there's still questions in chat and everything, just hit that mic button.
Taylor asks, is there a pattern between the requested features that people are asking for that they didn't know we have? Uh, the pattern is basically the stuff I put on uh, that page, like the, the financial services, like separation of duties and other kind of regulations that they have to comply with. Um, they all asked for that. So there was certainly a pattern and it's, it's, there's probably general patterns and patterns per vertical where huh, if you're in healthcare, you need to comply with HIPAA. We need to explain how to comply with HIPAA. And what we have right now is I think one paragraph about that and it's basically saying HIPAA doesn't apply. I think we can do better than that. And if we do better than that, people will understand, hey, there's other people in my industry using GitLab. That's why they have these, this text about them. So it's, it's a great way to show that it's an appropriate solution to their problems. Jason says, uh, see us as a GitOps company instead of a Git company. It's good for us, uh, for the understanding in the, the market. Yeah, like they should see it as, us as a DevOps company. We do complete DevOps. I love the term GitOps. I think it's still a bit fringe and uh, what our problem is, we need to apply, uh, we need to appeal to like C-level execs to sell GitLab Ultimate. Uh, they have never heard of GitOps. And frankly, probably Git, GitOps is pushing it a bit too far. Um, for example, yeah, deploying to a production environment. If you do that with like a branch merge, I'm not sure that's what people do. It's not what we do. It might be taking it slightly too far. So there's some logic in GitLab that's not in Git. I think that's fine. I think yeah, for, for them to understand we really do ops is to get away from the term Git. So DevOps is a, is a great term that, that really talks about our scope. Clement asks, how will the possible fundraise impact our IPO target date? Um, so we're still on track for November 18, 2020. Um, any fundraise shouldn't impact that. Now, if we raise a bit sooner, we can like uh, expand our R&D and marketing efforts sooner. So. Um, the earlier you raise, the better it is. On the other hand, the earlier you raise, the lower the valuation you're going to get. And for example, getting to like a unicorn valuation, $1 billion of, of post money valuation, that would really help uh, with customers and public clouds understanding that we're here for the long term and, and that we're, um, that we're not that we're going to stay an independent company. Now that's not to be said if we raise a bunch load of money from a good VC that that and we're not a unicorn that that's a problem, but it's an additional consideration. Yep, Matt, lots of lots of trade shows coming up each month. I think in the beginning of our roadshow, we asked people, "Hey, do you know what GitLab is, or do you kind of need a primer?" Like, do we need to update you? Almost everyone said, no, we know what GitLab is. And then halfway through the conversation, we found out with everyone that they've just thought of us as version control and CI. So we stopped asking and we just told that story. And I think it's, it's really important to kind of have those slides from the pitch deck up that show our competitors uh, and that show the scope of our product. I think those, slides really resonated. I'll put them up on the, the screen right now. And uh, the pitch deck, I hope you're using it. It's public, you can send it to customers. Um, and it's, it's, those are very powerful things. And we're gonna try to put it on the homepage as well. So this is, um, this is one of the two slides um, showing, hey, all the, you're using all these things now. This is what GitLab is an alternative for. And the next one is, it's an alternative for that because these are the features GitLab will have by the end of 2018. And then the, the, the pitch is, look, you have between 20 and 60 people doing DevOps tooling integration right now in your company. That's undifferentiated heavy lifting. What you should be doing instead is join 100,000 organizations that are collaboratively working on that. More than 2,000 people contributed code. That's a better, you'll get a better result than you can achieve on your own. 
and the people in your company will be able to focus on what's unique to your company and contribute that to uh, GitLab. And by making it a single application, you can get to a three times faster DevOps life cycle. You can get faster time to value, more motivated people. That's what we're selling. Chad asks, is there a common team that the CMO candidates do not have? You mentioned none of them hit the bar we have. What is the gap? So a couple of things. We focus a lot on demand generation, people knowing that, modern account-based marketing practices. Um, another thing we're looking for is scale. Uh, so having worked with large teams, like the marketing department is now close to 60 people, and it's just going to grow from here. Um, and the last thing is results. Um, so we had one candidate who came really far, but didn't have great references. So I think those are, are three things that are really important to us and that people uh, that not everyone meet or that so far nobody met. Dawa, if we can't get a hundred million at a billion in Q1 2019, would you rather wait longer or take the lower offer? Uh, answer is, I'm not sure. Um, it, it kind of, it depends on, on like the macro, like the macroeconomics, like is, is the market is very frothy now. Like people are paying amazing valuations for startups. It just takes one major trade war to impact that. So if the market is different, like you're not going to move the market, et cetera. And it also depends eh, what, what you do with it. It also depends on the alternative. So it's, it's, it's hard to see. So William asks, if, if GitLab is holding us back, do we need to look at a rebrand? Rebrands, rebrands are extremely painful, especially since people have GitLab installed in their computers, people have it in URLs, etc. So instead, look, Airbnb, people understand that you can get something else than Airbeds to sleep on from Airbnb. So it's just about educating the market. In the end, the name shouldn't matter. Would I choose the same name today? Probably not. Does it matter? No, nope. it's just about us going out and creating awareness. Michael Alessio is also enthusiastic about those slides. Uh, great, Michael. Um, those are great slides and we're trying to get them up on our homepage. And I'm even pushing the product marketing team a bit to get our competitors' brand uh, logos on there. So we'll see how that goes. Ah, Jacob asked the, the great question. 100 million at a billion. It means that we raise $100 million. Um, so the, the, you, that means you give out new shares to the new investor and they pay $100 million for it. And afterwards you have $100 million more in your bank account. And one billion means that the pre-money valuation is a billion dollars. So after investing um, 100 million, they have, I think, slightly less than 10% of the company. Um, if we're going into there, anyway, a unicorn means that your post-money valuation is a billion. So that would be like, even if you raise 100 at 900, you would get there because you can, the difference between the pre and post-money valuation is the money you raise, so 900, it's pre-money valuation, you get 100 million in, you end up with a, a company that's theoretically worth a billion dollars, and a new investor has 10% of that. Emily asks, how's hiring the GM for Meltano? Um, slightly frustrating, we had a great candidate, but the candidate now put hit the pause button. So uh, that was a... Slightly, uh, slightly annoying. Uh, so we got to go, uh, go back and, and, and look at other candidates. Tommy says probably also immediately draw comparisons to GitHub's price tag. Yes. And then it's kind of normal that an acquisition offer is higher 50 to 100% higher than a financing offer. 
I'm not sure about those percentages, but it's normal that it's high in our fundraising. How much of the company belongs to the VCs? Uh, Jacob asks, it's the, it's the majority of our company belongs to the, uh, the people that put money in, uh, the investors. And I don't, although I bootstrapped the company, I don't consider myself an investor. Sean asked, did you get a feel for the financial services would actually investigate GitLab after hearing what we do? As you mentioned, they've invested a lot in their current tool chain. Some have. So we talked to the person from Capital One. Look, they've made an amazing tool chain and they have products like Hygieia that were an inspiration for our psychoanalytics. So I think they'll be not the first ones to switch. But even they were looking at a new CI system. So... Um, no one's going to throw away everything they've made and adopt GitLab. That never happened in the history of the company. So what you try to do is just get in there. And the, probably the less the company has made so far, the more you can take out. But that doesn't mean there's not an entryway into every single company. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, there was a column in, uh, in Forbes uh, published. Mark asks, given our direction with Maltana, are there large data science shows that we will have a presence at going forward? Um, basically, the Maltano project doesn't have the budget for that. And that's okay. It has to, um, like Dimitri attracted 300 contributors in the first year of GitLab without much marketing or any marketing. So um, Maybe the people at Maltana will give talks, but it's not like we're going to rent a booth or something like that. There's just the, the, the product has to make money before we can afford that. And it's a long way away from making money. The first thing for Maltano is to get contributors. The second thing is to get users. And the third thing is to get customers. So it will have to go to all those stages. So for now, it's about telling people it exists and asking them to contribute. Hey, Paul gave some uh, specifics. 50% of GitLab is owned by VCs. Thanks, Paul. Paul, does that include or exclude our seed investors? It includes our seed investors. Thanks. Hey, Sid, I have a question. <clears throat> um, on the slides that you shared from Excel or Accel, I don't know how to pronounce their name. Excel, like Accelerate. Oh, okay. Uh, they, there was mention or there was a slide on um, potential acquisition targets for, for us to acquire um, a company. I think White Source was on there. Was that, is that something that they did on their own or are you, have you have, are there any potential acquisition targets that, that you've been looking at? Um, what's, our, what's our appetite for, for something like that at this point? Yep, uh, low, thanks for the question. Low appetite, that slide is something they did. Like they want you to take their money. So they're like, <laughs> think of something for you to buy. What they, uh, what they don't know is that we have enough. Um, we, we got a lot of um, product ideas and things. We just need people to kind of realize them. So I don't think we'll spend a lot of money on acquisitions. Although, yeah, never say never. Um, they made a case for white source, which is interesting. White source uh, does... Um, dependency analysis like we do, like what Gymnasium makes, um, but they go one step further. They look not only on is the, is the dependency you're using vulnerable or not, but also are you hitting that code path where the vulnerability is in? It's, uh, I think source clear did the, the, did the same thing. They were just acquired by CA. So it's kind of a more advanced version. I didn't hear any customer ask for that yet. So I'm not sure we should pretty up for that. It seems like uh, uh, something that's also pretty hard to maintain be because it means every vulnerability that's out there on the internet, now you got to find out what code paths it hits, et cetera. Um, but we're, we're open to acquisitions when they kind of add, quickly add to, uh, to our vision, to completing our vision. Uh, so the gymnasium team was, was a great collaboration, how they came in and from uh, Dimitri made a start with our security products and they just completely uh, blew me away with the speed at which they executed. And 
the amazing thing to see was that those uh, financial services companies, two meetings with super big clients, they put on the agenda, hey, can we ha please have an ultimate license so we can try out the security products? So there's a lot of demand for it and people are willing to uh, pay up. Now, Paul says that VC, VC, like investors in, uh, have 55% of the company. Like, like I said, it's the majority of the company. No, I was answering uh, Jacob's question about uh, if, if we did a $100 million valuation or a $100 million raise, how much would they then own? It would oh. be 55%. So. Amazing. Wow, you were on point with that 50%. Yeah, that one was kind of skeptical, like 50%, 50.0? Like how much exactly? Good questions, Dawa. Um, what do you think, Paul? Is it 50.0000%? Uh, that's getting a little bit too precise for me, but uh, you can attend the next uh, finance FGU and, and find that out specifically. <laughs> ah, I like that. Cliffhangers and cross promotion. Okay, gonna wrap up the questions that are uh, still there. So Jacob asks, yeah, if they invest, yeah, then VCs own more of the company. So if we get 5 million from a VC and 100 million from a VC, wouldn't 100 million VC own a much larger percentage? You're on the money, Jacob. You could work on in VC now. It's the more you invest, the more you own. So how much you get depends on the how much money you put in and the valuation of the company. That's the determines your share percentage. Paul asks, customers with existing tool chains, best ways to introduce GitLab adoption right now, it's source control, CI, issue tracking, probably source control and CI even more because the big ones all have Jira and they, they, like, they like the extensive feature set. But hopefully as our other offerings mature, we get some traction there, container registry, et cetera. Dow asks 50% of the voting rights. Yeah, Dow, right now all the, the voting rights are kind of 1x, except for a, uh, a thing we put in for, for the future, maybe have a bit more, have, have 10x voting rights for the founders, but we're not sure how that works, will work, and whether they'll accept that. Shots Brothers Venture Capital. Yep. Cool. Thanks, everyone. I want you to be on time for the team call. Thanks for the questions. Really enjoyed it.